Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making a DIY tea soap and I'm very excited. I have this uh, silicone mold here that I used for a cake that I made some weeks ago on my channel. I'm going to be using this uh, uh, yellow vibrant mica from Nurture Soap. And for fragrance, I was thinking the best choice that I have in my fragrance oil collection is this fragrance oil hot buttered popcorn from a German company called The Fragrancy. All right, so I have um, the lye water solution here and the oils. They are at about the same temperature. That's really important when you make soap that they are not more than 10 to 15 degrees difference. And then I'm gonna pour the lye water solution into the oils. And then I stick blend to emulsion. It means that all the oils and the water are combined. Now it's time to add the colorant. This is uh, this yellow vibrant mica that I got from Nurture Soap and I think it would be the appropriate color for a cheese color. And let's see if this works out well. It might be that I need to add a little bit of another color, but it looks quite okay like this. I mean, cheese also has different kind of shades, so you cannot really go wrong with it. But this looks good. Make sure that everything is well incorporated. And now I'm going to add the fragrance oil. And what I usually do is I just hand stir it in. I think there is no need for stick blending it unless you want to, to do some piping and you need like a thick consistency. All right, so now ready for the pour. I think the color looks really good. Let's see how it looks um, tomorrow. Might get a little lighter, but even if, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. All right, so now we're gonna wait for 24 hours and see how it turns out tomorrow. Give a little spritz of rubbing alcohol first, and then all we need to do is to wait. Okay, so it's the next day and uh, let's see how this unmolds. I like to stretch the mold around the soap just to make sure that it doesn't stick. And if you see that it sticks, then you just leave it for uh, one more day. That's not a problem at all. I like to use sodium lactate in my lye water just to make the unmolding easier. All right, so this doesn't look so bad. looks like a cheese loaf so now I'm very excited to see how this carving is gonna be so I have my measuring spoons just very simple measuring spoons and um, first of all I want to trim off the edge here I use this uh, tool from Brambleberry I find this is um, really good you can also use a potato peeler of course I just find I can control better with uh, this kind of tool here. I'm used to it so that the finish is smooth here on the bottom. And then let's see, this is the first time I'm trying to make this uh, cheese holes kind of look. So I'm really excited to see. I'm gonna start with a small one. And then you just place the spoon and you just turn it around like you would scoop out some ice cream, you know? But you just want to make it in a very circular form. That's it. So I'm just gonna continue doing this in different kind of spots and also with different kind of spoon sizes here to make it look a little different. This is really fun and it's actually not so difficult.
So I think it turned out really cool. It looks like a cheese for real. And now let's see how we can go about with the cutting. So I'm just gonna start by cutting it in half. And it looks like the knife is not long enough, but I don't have another knife, so I need to somehow cope. See how I can start by cutting half of it and then a quarter. And it doesn't really matter because at the end it will be anyways cut in smaller pieces so you won't see a difference. And then for the other quarter. Because of course you cannot use this cheese loaf here to wash yourself on the shower, can you imagine? <laughs> It's a big piece of soap, right? Okay, so in the inside of the cheese now, I'm gonna make more holes to make it look more authentic. And you know, this is uh, this type of cheese here is called Emmentaler. It's a Swiss cheese that you can find here. I'm gonna show you a picture. This is very specific for Switzerland, not that it has a lot of taste to it, but um, it's very, very popular here. Okay, so I think we are pretty good. One more. And if you don't go in so deep with your measuring spoon, then the holes are also more shallow, so you can really control it like that. So this is how it looks. I think it's pretty cool. It looks pretty realistic. And now I had an idea that we could add a little mouse. So I'm not a specialist about soap though, but what I did here is I just used my regular recipe that you can find down in the description box below and instead of letting it uh, cure uh, normally like being exposed to the air, I just insulated it. Very easy. And then the next day you can, it's still soft and you can form it. So that's all what I did. I'm sure it's not perfect, but it works out. So I'm really trying to, to see if I can make a little mouse. I'm not gonna be adding any eyes to it or nose or something, just because um, I think it's good if you just have like an impression of a mouse and not really go into details if you are not expert like I am, I'm not. So I'm attempting to make the little ears. And this takes a little bit practice, I believe. <laughs> yeah, why not, huh? And then the tail, of course, huh? And voila, there is the little mouse that I'm going to place on our cheese loaf here. As an uninvited guest, you might say. And here we go. This is how it looks at the end. I think it's pretty cute. What do you think? I really hope you enjoyed this video and hope to see you around very soon for another one. And in the meantime, have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and bye bye.